Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we're going to talk about Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, Season 1, Episode 2, The Bad Beginning, Part 2. This is a long title, I have to like... This, this, this is going on like a long, uh, long time. I know, because Lemony Snicket's Series of Unfortunate Events, Season, Episode, Title, and then there's a Part 1 or 2 at the end of all these as well, so... Oof. Anyway, full spoilers for the episode. And uh, yeah, so we'll get into it. Uh, <laughs> first things first. At the end of the last one, we, we weren't sure. We said that it was Colby Smalders played the mother. It was, which I knew as soon as we seen her again. But yeah. her name did come up, but it came up on a separate screen. And you know how Netflix like minimizes, minimizes the credits? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see all our nets first, and then it minimized. So it was uh, there last time. I just never saw it because it. That went small. Makes sense. As soon as I saw her, I was like, ah, oh, it was her. Yeah. Which is cool. I like her. Uh, yeah, me too. So, uh, I, I thought this was a solid follow-up. It, it is kind of funny, though, how it does very much feel like the end of the first movie kind of thing. It does. And barring the end of the last episode and the start of this one, you could edit them into one movie quite easily. And the ending, to this one, to an extent. I feel, I feel like the, the ongoing thread of the parents... Or is the well, thing yeah, that it, feels more like a TV show, whereas the the actual it, that that plot. feels like almost uh, an after credit scene in, in it does. a modern movie. Uh, it feels like a post Marvel post credit scene in a Marvel movie where you're building yeah. up this parents thing for <laughs> six for movies probably. Uh, there's a lot more stuff in there because uh, the, so we got a flashback at the start and we learned that the secretary for Mister Poe, who I will may accidentally call Mister Tricks because that was his name in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, I knew I recognised him. I knew he was in something. The sneaky <laughs> bugger. I feel that with a lot of the cast, actually. Like the yeah. guy with the, the the hook hands. I don't recognise him. Uh, he's cracking me up though. Every time he's like oh, saying I, hello and I've, waving I've to people. I've definitely seen him in something recently. Uh, he's definitely cracking me up. My, my favourite one was when he said, "Shall I let him off the hook?" Yeah, that was that was a good pun. Uh, also, when like, Olaf takes him outside, then reveals that he's got Sonny up in the cage, and he's just up there going "Hello," <laughs> <laughs> waving, his, waving his hand. Yeah. Uh, that was really good, but uh, the, other, the other cast member. I mean, we. I told you this when I was looking at IMDb between episodes, but you, you never noticed this. But the the voice of Sonny the Baby is actually Tara Strong, who voices Harley Quinn in the Arkham games and a bunch of other animated oh, characters. So, it's weird though. Once you've said it, I can kind of hear it. Yeah. Because she does a lot of these squeaky, yeah. high pitched voices and noises a lot. Yeah, I don't think you'd ever recognize it, but you like once you know it, you're like, eh, yeah, I can see that being her. Yeah, yeah, because I was paying attention for it as well. Me too. Yeah, now that I knew it was her. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wonder what the directions like when you're in the the booth and you're doing baby well, noises. Go, well, they gotta go. Here's the sentence that the subtitle is gonna be. Make a noise that says that. Yeah, but I just wonder is the director standing there and giving her notes? Like she goes, eh, gee, gee, gee. no, no, no. I want more luster in the second half of that because I want it to sound like this. Oh, I hope so. Uh, I think we need to ask her on Twitter what, what that involves. <laughs> I know what the direction's like when you're doing baby noises. She might answer. She's she's quite active on Twitter. Oh, we should we should ask her. But anyway, uh, so plot. So yeah, there's more of this stuff with the parents. There's people looking for her, and the secretary who works for Mister Poe is. I'm going to just call them agents right now. I'm, I'm assuming they're part of a secret society yeah. of agents. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, uh, this logo keeps popping up, and they seem to have this logo as well. And they've all got the telescopes. They've all got the telescopes, and her her secret agent friend shows up, and they mention how the kids were meant to go to this person. That this was the plan. So there's clearly an ongoing plot thread. They're yeah. kind of revealing, unraveling. I don't know how much you know about this from the books. I know bits. You know bits. Right? I'm not going to say anything, but like the thing is, I haven't read them in a long time. So yeah, what yeah. I do know is kind of hazy anyway. But just in case I'm, uh, I will right, say, I say one of the running jokes in this episode that I loved that it, it kind of started with the other characters and went to them because they they come to the because the whole plot of the episode of course is that Olaf is going to do a fake marriage and a play to Violet so he can actually really marry her in secret and therefore be the get all of her assets. And this this is one so of the things I remember where the movie you know how it mashed up the first three books mm. as you see here this is the end of the first book but that did it at the end of the movie so they kind of yeah. did. They started, the, they went to him, and then they go off and do these other bits that we'll see in the next few episodes, and then they go back for that wedding, and it was really yeah. weird. Again, get into things that are slightly dark. The, the one moment in this one that felt really dark is... The hand on the shoulder. The, yeah, it was like, I'll touch anything I want, and then he touches Violet in the shoulder. I'm like, 
All right, that was really rapey. <laughs> that was so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's, it, it's one of those things though that that for any kids watching, you know, nothing. It will yeah, be, yeah. be creepy, but it won't be like that. But then you know, like it's such a. I mean, in a way, the whole plan is really creepy anyway because she's yeah. fourteen. <laughs> well, yeah. So but that's the only time he insinuates that it's even like remotely insinuated that it's more than just marrying to get money. Yeah, you almost believe that he he like once they're married, I'll oh, lock her in a room. I, I don't want anything to do with her. Yeah, which is bad as well. Don't get me wrong, but it's... Or, or, or as he even implied, he might just kill her like the other with the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just yeah. Because that's the other dark thing is that not only is the baby threatened with death, he uh, he obviously the baby's actually rescued rescued herself by this point, but he actually is like drop her, drop her to her death after the it's like yeah. you're going to go to prison for that, you tit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was an odd funny line that no, cracked no, me up. Just, yeah, the yeah. titular a boy your age should not say the word titular. And then he sniggers after it as well. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what I love about his performance? It's that he makes mistakes and he says stupid stuff, but he has this arrogant confidence that even when he corrects himself, he does it in a way that he's like, yeah, they'll never know I was wrong because I've corrected myself. Kind of, it's, there's this, just this confidence in everything. Like, I, almost a, a dumbfounded confidence. It is, yeah. And that, that's what makes it glorious when he when he tries to get away with things and he tries to say... Like, at the start in the flashback, when he goes into the, the vault... Which, by the way, I love that Mr. Poe's office is in a vault. Yeah, that's amazing. Every, but, everyone who works in a bank should have an office in a vault. So, that, first of all. But he, you know, he, he gives the fake name that he gave at the door because the secretary's standing there. And then, when he's, like, going on about his spiel, he's like, you know, if I was lying, my name's not whatever I told you it was. Because yeah. he's forgotten what the fake name was, like just yeah. lo- things like that worked worked really well. Uh, but yeah, the, the two agents are in the the audience in the in the play where he's supposedly marrying in the play, but he's actually really marrying Violet. That's the plan. And one of my favorite running jokes is this whole argument about uh, literally and figuratively. Yeah. Throughout the episode, and it was okay when it first came up because like Olaf didn't understand the difference. I was like, yeah, this is amusing just because his reactions. And we get the explanation when it cut, he does the cutaways to uh, let me stick it. I really like these. It's one of those things where it's TV trying to be educational as well. As, oh, you mean the cutaways? Yeah, because ah. it's like, you know, if anyone younger who is watching this, they might actually learn. That's true. I, that's, a, that's a good perspective that I hadn't really thought of because I was just, I was taking it as a kind of, a so stylistic think, touch. Like, yeah, I always think if you go back to like early TV, like BBC, their whole thing was TV has to inform and educate and be enjoyable that was like that mm. whole thing so this kind of feels like a spiritual successor to that like uh it's entertaining but it's in, it's educational i i'm not going to embarrass myself and tell you if i've learned anything myself i should i'm an adult i should know all these things that they're oh yeah up. there's definitely not one specific word in there that i did not know <laughs> <laughs> hey you're never too old to learn exactly but yeah that, that was funny on its own well enough it wasn't one wasn't one of the best jokes but it was fine yeah but then during the the play, they start complaining that he uses the wrong word, and it just started cracking me up because it, it, it brought it back. And then it, then he said that again. The agent man said that at the end when he got hit by the dart, he's like, "I'm literally standing in front of a pond." Oh, that was, that was funny. That was it good was stuff. good. And the, the, there's the sign of a lot of these running jokes. One that I, I do remember from the books that they they did set up in the the last episode that comes up in this. We're all the, different ages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where he goes, going? "Oh, when I was your age." Yeah, yeah, but we're all different ages. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize that was a round joke, of course, until they said it again in this episode because they said it in the first one, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah. it's fine, it was a fine joke." But it's, 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 it's some jokes that are okay on their own, but it's once they become a re- repeating thing, it that becomes funny. funnier. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like this figuratively and literally thing. It, yeah. It's it's all right, it's it's fine, but the more it happens, it just gets funnier. Yeah, yeah, and it so. shouldn't, but it does. No, that's good. Uh, so a lot of the plot is the kids realise what he's up to, what he's trying to do with this whole marriage thing, and Klaus tries to research his way out of it and comes up with loopholes and stuff. It doesn't quite take, and Violet tries to build build an apparatus to rescue Sonny up in the cage. She builds essentially a grappling hook, hook out of a pasta hook. Uh, yeah, like trainer? a meat hook sort of thing. Yeah. It's like a meat hook that goes up and then she's got the pasta strainer that... Yeah propels her up the, the like the curtain or whatever it is, the fabric yeah. to get to the top and that was all amusing 
Right, which is a nice callback at the end when you realise that her mum's also an inventor. And Kobe Smothers like, oh, I've, I've built a grappling hook. But yeah. this is when it also referenced another thing she said in this episode, which I also thought was an oddly dark thing. Not in the same way that the, the rapey thing was, but it was dark in the sense where she's like, oh, we've got bottles, maybe I can make a Molotov cocktail. I'm like, this escalated. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, Klaus is like, what's a Molotov cocktail? And she's like, oh, it's like a small bomb. I'm like, what did you do? <laughs> making bombs. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But we have no kerosene. I- <laughs> you definitely want to see them go around throwing Molotovs, though, don't you? That reminds me. I saw a clip. Someone uh, was taking clips from Home Alone, which I assume you've seen because you're weird yeah. sometimes. You've not seen. No, I've seen Home Alone. Don't worry. Uh, someone took like a scene from Home Alone and added in blood to make it look like a dark horror movie. That sounds terrifying. And it's, it's a moment, uh, spoilers for the end of Home Alone if you somehow haven't seen the end of Home Alone. But you know at the end when the the neighbor comes in with the shovel yeah. and he hits Marv and uh, yeah. Harry and. It's like, you know, it hits Marv and there's like a blood splat on the, the wall. And then it hits the thing and there's a blood splat. And then they re edit it so the guy takes another swing and you just hear Kevin scream as it cuts to the credits. <laughs> but it, it was really funny. I like the idea of like an R rated Home Alone movie where it's like over the top violent. Yeah. And it, this is a weird one. Like, that I feel like it could get away with the kids throwing Molotovs because it is yeah. so heightened and ridiculous. Yeah. Speaking of hating the ridiculous, uh, Sonny playing cards and being very good at dealing. Oh Don't get me God. wrong, the CG and the dealing cards was really obvious, but you kind of went along with it because it was funny. Because you've got a baby throwing cards and a hook-handed man <laughs> catching them with his mouth. Hook, I don't care. Hook hands is a uh, grown army. He's becoming maybe one of... Like, obviously, Neil Patrick Harris, Colonel Olaf, he's the, he's the star. He's the main event. Oh, always. But Hook man's growing on me. He is getting up there, isn't he? Hookman is growing on me, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that, that was the whole thing. They do the wedding, and they they get they argue the way out of it because she uses a left hand to sign the the document instead of the right hand, which I'm uh, I don't know if that's it. I mean, I, I guess the argument might be that if it's your left hand, that it's not really your signature because you know your signatures all might be the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's the argument. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like the show is. Like- There's some random legal bollocks that it feels like it doesn't even need to bother explaining to us because it doesn't matter, and that's fine. Yeah, like, with this show, had they just said, "Oh yeah, oh she used the wrong hand. Oh, there you go, that's it done." Like, but instead they had this little montage where Klaus is like get a blackboard and he's being a legal genius. He's being a legal genius as he does. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it was an awful fun episode. Lots of good running jokes. I thought it was funnier than the first one. I think it's teasing a lot more of this uh, running plot with the, the agents yeah. and the parents, so I feel like I'm getting more of a sense of that. But it did feel like a satisfying like end of like this first story. Yes, definitely, because it had like a full thing that happened. Like you, you know, we had from the the event to meeting Olaf to how they get out of that er- at first. I think I think this first two part will feel the most individual like that i feel like that all the rest will feel like their own two partners i feel like they'll bleed into each other a lot easier because it is more now we're in the sequence of all the different relatives and the hijinks perhaps yeah it depends how uh individual the 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 sep yeah. guardians feel like it's, they all have their own identity it's kind of like how in some tv shows the pilot feels kind of separate from the rest of the show where it feels like a movie on its own and then a show comes out of it yeah it kind of feels like that kind of sense. Uh, it still looks good. Uh, mu- music's really good. I actually, I, I, I was paying more attention this time during the opening titles. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris is singing. He's singing, yeah. yeah. I, I noticed that last time, but then forgot by the time we yeah, come to record. Yeah. Nice yeah. little touches. Uh, but no, he's, he's cracking me up. And again, the baby subtitles are still funny. Yeah. You know, The baby in general is just fantastic. Yeah, you know, I was spe- I was baking these, these cupcakes for you all day. Cut to the baby. They're store-bought. <laughs> so good. Uh, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying this. I think it's very like this. This episode showed it can be really funny, and it set up a lot of recurring jokes that should hopefully continue on throughout and keep it funny. I think the kids are better defined in this one as well. After the first one, I, th- I feel like you know when Violet put her hair up to like I'm going to invent shit now. Like yeah. that felt like it meant something. Cause like, oh, I got that because in the first one it set this it idea told us, yeah. that she ties her hair back when she's about to, you know. And it almost feels like real. it's taken the easy way out because it literally just had a narrator tell us when this happens, it's important. It's not something you even have to pick up on yourself. They just pointed it out, but it still works. I think it's because the narrator's so 
deep into the show. Like it's it's integrated and it's constantly going back to him. It feels like a, a proper part. I I loved the bit where he was talking about the marriage and then it just kind of you could still hear him underneath in the background. Mm. You know, like he was he was going on and on and on, but the scene carried on over the top. Yeah, yeah. And he was it, just very it, quiet. Yeah, I went to him, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I did like all that. So no, it's a solid episode two. Very, very easy watch, very this was the longest episode. The rest of them are all shorter than this one, and I didn't. It still went in really quickly. Yeah, I didn't really feel the length, so that is a testament to the pacing. And I think there's a lot of nice little directing touches in here as well. Uh, one moment that really stuck out to me is uh, when they've just kind of figured out what the what Olaf's up to, and both the kids are on the stairs. There's these couple of great shots looking down at his henchmen, the the, the acting trip. Yeah. And it's like this, you know, Dutch angle, forced perspective kind of thing where they feel really in your face. Yeah, and it just, there's, just a there's another great one with uh, Olaf standing off against one of his henchmen, and it's literally just b- bird's eye looking straight oh, down at the tops of their heads. It's when they're arguing that there's nothing that rhymes with Count Olaf, and they say That's something it. really silly that rhymes with it, and then the agents yeah, in the later scene, later. which by the way, I'm loving it that we keep going back to the sewers, there's like no reason for all these sewer scenes, and it keeps going back to the sewer, I, either Lemony Snicket's in there, or the agents are in there, it's her walking with the tree was you know, a sight of itself. Yeah. So, no, uh, good fun. And speaking of Lemony Snicket, I actually took a second to, to get a joke in the middle because he, they're, they're sampling the wedding cakes and his henchman comes out and he's like, here, right, this one's got a bit of nutmeg, this one's vanilla and this one's lemony. I told you never to say that word. See, when he said that, I was like, what word? I don't get that. And it took oh a second. And it took a second. Oh, Lemony! Oh, that was like a meta breaking the fourth wall joke. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was very good. It took me a second to get it. I was like, what word? What's wrong with I Lemony? Cl- I, I, cl- I clicked straight away. <laughs> oh, Lemony Snicket! Oh, that was funny. Okay. That was funny. Uh, but, uh, good. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching more of this now. Uh, me so. too. And it's, it's so easy to watch. I could literally just watch this all day, I think. Yeah, it's a very easy binge watch. I don't think that because it's not heavy. It's nice and light. You like the characters. I feel like the kids are growing on me. Obviously, and it's it's really about seeing the bad guys' antics and how evil they are. And they they it's, they do feel proper. I feel like kids' movies have kind of shied away from having proper villains. Like yeah, it feels very like, watered down. The, yeah, the, these feel like they can be scary. Yeah, whereas these, you know, he, he's threatened to kill the baby. He's. <laughs> Touching her inappropriately. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, he's a proper villain. But... It, at the same time, though, it almost feels very Scooby Doo esque of vil- like, yeah, what what are the antics this week? Which, by, by the way, I actually I love the moment when he's about to like everything's went down at the play. Everyone's realised what an awful person he is, and the lights go out. But before he runs off, does that great silhouette just the the light? Oh, and he leans in close. Oh, it's a gorgeous and, shot. Like, that. I will get you know I can't remember the exact lines, but I will get to you. I will get that fortune. It's, I think it was like if it's the last thing I do. Yeah. You fortunately might. I think it was in the trailer that shot. Was but, it okay? Yeah, uh, it was still gorgeous. Yeah, it was gorgeous. It was a great moment, and no, nah, it's, it's, it's actually quite scary as well. Yeah. So well, he's already been rapey, so it's especially scary. Well, yeah, that's the that thing. Fight. Like it, it's it's slowly building him up that he actually feels like he's quite a scary person, even though. It's having fun with how terrifying he is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously the show's cartoony. You can't get like, away from that because it, there's, you know, like in, in real life, if this was going on, the kids would make one alarming shout to a neighbor, and this, yeah. you know, people would be storming the house and be like, "What's going on? You're treating these kids poorly." Blah 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 yeah. blah. Uh, so it's cartoony, but it, it's it's having a lot of fun with it, and I'm I'm digging it actually. So that's yeah. episode two of. A series of unfortunate events. We will be back with episode three later today, tonight. I don't know what time, but sometime today. So thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. We'll see you next time.